And now for a cover story. It's really interesting to see your community through a stranger's eyes. Not that the students at the International Language Institute remain strangers for long. They come here to learn English. They work hard, but they also have a lot of fun. The International Language Institute is a charter member of the Nova Scotia Come to Life initiative and really does bring Nova Scotia to life for these international students. Here's Barb Anderson. Students come to the International Language Institute from Korea, Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, Mexico, Brazil, China, the Middle East, and many other countries, all with a common goal, to acquire the English language. Students are placed according to their level of English. And so our morning classes are integrated skills with grammar, vocabulary, as well as we use text, reading and listening text, but it's meant to extract the language from it to be more communicative. And our afternoon classes are based on um, reading and writing skills and then listening and speaking skills. So if somebody, for example, comes from a country where they have the opportunity to do a lot of speaking, but their reading skills are lower, they might be in a higher speaking class and a lower reading class. Or they might take an exam class as well, depending on what their needs for English are. But Generally, the teachers are very good at classroom management. English remains the business language of the world. The economic well-being of a country depends, in part, on the ability to communicate with trading partners. For example, our Korean students need English for trade. Our Saudi Arabian students come to, in to basically to North America for uh, university degrees. Uh, the Chinese students come for university degrees often in business because they're trading with English-speaking countries. So decide which of those websites are good for academic research. ILI is a full-service school. Host families help in making a foreign student feel at home here. Still, it is a daunting experience. Angela traveled 20 hours to get here from her home in northeastern Russia. I arrived at the midnight, so I didn't stand anything. <laughs> but next day, I liked it. Yeah, because I liked people when I knew them. The goals of these students are as individual as they are. Uh, I was studying uh, for one year in Russia. Um, I was studying international relationships, but I was studying Canada and America. So I, now I'm, I'm in Canada and I, won't, I don't need to study this. So I decided to study psychology or image consulting. I want to be an image consultant because I, I found it very interesting to help people how to look, how to, uh, what behavior to use in this or that situation. So what hair to, to I don't know, it's very interesting for me. Yeah, the second one. The second one is yeah. good. Well, Mizbar comes from Bangladesh. He plans to study accounting. When I studied there, I don't feel that because teachers are so nice. They are very different where they teach us. That's why I feel good and already I improved a lot. It's Friday afternoon, and a group of students are at a local brewery. They are heading out to a Mooseheads game at the Metro Center after this. A different social activity is scheduled every weekend. It's part of the program. Activities plug into the Nova Scotia experience. And the big advantage that we have is that we don't have a lot of schools here. And when a student is considering Canada, they're thinking, OK, if I go to Vancouver or Toronto, sure, there's lots of opportunity. It's a big city and it's an exciting place to be and visit and study but just um, being much more anglophone community here then it's uh, um, a little less diverse and multicultural perhaps than other communities in Canada and so I think uh, they feel like they're really uh, immersed in the language and surrounded with a real English community. Yeah it's beautiful here uh, we really enjoy Nova Scotia and especially people here are so friendly Marco's journey here is yet another example of the diversity at the Institute. He's a computer engineer from Switzerland. I've quit my job and everything, and so we are traveling by bicycle within Canada. Ayako is from Japan. Uh, I, I want to study English, and uh, I want to be a Japanese teacher. Even on outings like this, the International Language School operates within very strict language perimeters, English only. So when students come in on day one, 
they sit down with me, I go through all the rules, they get a pre-language test as well, but we go through this very strict, what language can you speak English, and can you speak Spanish, no, can you speak Russian, no, what language, we are constantly checking. Then we have them sign a promise, it's a written promise that they're only going to speak English in the school. Then we check again to make sure that they are clear on what that means. So that means if, if you know you're expecting a call from your parents, let's say you're from Saudi Arabia, you're expecting a call home from mom, um, you let the teacher know that you're expecting a call, and as soon as the phone rings, you excuse yourself and you have to go outside. You're not even allowed to answer the phone and say hello in Arabic. You have to go straight outside. The International Language School has an excellent international reputation. Staff is hand-picked. We're a teacher training school, and... You know, um, I'm one of the teacher trainers as well as the director of the department, so that means that I get to see folks when they're actually on the course, and I also get to look at who would be good for our team. Sometimes, Sandy says, the teachers here can barely speak English by the end of the week. They become walking dictionaries. There is a real sense of fun here. Students are obviously highly focused and motivated. They are also really enjoying the International Language Institute program. But I would say that the staff at, at, you know, at the International Language Institute, they're all fun-loving. They've all got great senses of humor, and they're, they're into teamwork, right? And that's key, because if you have people who don't really like their job or aren't terribly interested in planning, you're not going to have a fun classroom environment, and we all learn better when we're having fun. I study hard now. Very, very exciting. But I want to go back in my country, and I do something for my countries. I hope that, um, that my being in Canada will be very helpful, uh, will, will help me in my future life. I hope so. I think so, yeah. yeah. In Halifax, I'm Barb Anderson for Eastlink Magazine. As Barb mentioned in the story, the International Language Institute has a lot to offer Nova Scotians as well. If you're thinking of teaching English overseas, it's a good place to get your training and certification. Sports is next on Eastlink Magazine.